And then I'm also just, this grass, I'm not gonna worry about, you know, making it look like anything. It's just because it's barely visible, but. Did you put more dark in that or is that still got some green in it? It's still got a lot of green in it. It's pretty much the same green that I put oh, up just here. Looks different to me here. I'm kind of applying it a little bit thicker. Oh, and that okay. might be why, because I know that I'm not really going to go back over uh -huh. the grass much. I'm not really going to spend much of any time on the grass. So I'm just kind of blocking it in and I'll just let it be. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and actually before I go to that tree, I want to just darken up the pond a little bit. And I'm mostly just going to use my blue and just a tiny tiny bit of red and I don't even know if I'll paint in like the little fountains or anything like that I did this painting last night and I tried to put those in and it was like oh, they're so the small fountains. yeah the little fountains that are kind of lit up see. I know so I'm just yeah. gonna leave them out okay and so now I'm going to just use like I'm gonna start adding just a very small amount of white just to kind of lighten this up a little bit you don't need much because um, a lot too and I'm gonna I just want this to be a little bit more blue but I'm still mixing it in with my green so it's not like a pure blue and this will be my shadowy area um, but when you are starting to add white it's better to not add enough white to add too much too fast because you can't take it backwards but i want this little tree just to kind of stand out a little bit so i'm going to just use this slightly so the combination you got going there right now mm -hmm. is green and then you add a little red to that yep to kind of dull it down a little bit and then i added more blue for and this a little more white and a little white yep so it makes it a gray blue exactly okay i think that's i mean for me even that's kind of the hardest part is to not use too much white too fast did you just add a little more white i did yep and just as i add to this tree and try to define it so it stands out from those other trees i'm just adding a little bit of white at a time just to give it a couple of highlights where the light is kind of catching it And then can you, you can, are you going to put this, that's, yeah, like under no, on top. Yeah. Oh yeah, I am. I am. But I'm going to actually do that with the sky. Okay. So this area down here, you can kind of see there's, I don't know, there's probably some houses back there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you don't need to do that. Yeah, you don't need to do that. But what you can do if you don't want it, this just to be a really dark block of, something yeah identifying that there's something back there yeah anytime I kind of have like an ambiguous color like you can kind of see what's back there but not really I usually will just end up mixing up kind of a gray so your blue and red and then add a little bit of purple and even though in this photo I think it looks like really light it's kind of deceptive I, th I don't think it like if you put a really light color there it would kind of pop out a little too much so I anytime I kind of have an ambiguous color or actually like here where we know like those sandbags are mm -hmm. at Hartwell Park I'm going to use the same color so it's just kind of a neutral color and I don't want it to be too light but it'll just kind of separate the space enough Okay, 
And now the fun part, the sky. So I'm going to start a new mixture because I don't want any of this green mixture in the sky. And I'm going to try to just wipe off my brush as good as I can, although it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to start out with just my blue and a little bit of white. It seems like it's pretty light in this picture, um, but I don't want to take it too light too fast. And you tend to mix always with your brush, right? Yeah, I really, like, I actually prefer to use my palette knife, but it's like whatever is in my hand I end up mixing uh, okay. with. And for a while, I was trying to do a lot of my paintings, like, with a palette knife instead of a brush, and so I was mixing with my palette knife. But now it's like, now that I just have my brush in my hand, I've gotten out of the habit of switching over to my palette knife to mix. Yeah. But I actually prefer to use my palette knife to mix just because I don't lose so much paint into the bristles and I can kind of form a little bit of a pile that makes it a little easier to pick up the paint. Oh, I got a little green in there. Yeah. That's okay. I need to get a little more blue. Now is that the, that's, trying to see if it's the same or darker or lighter. I'm trying to keep it about the same. same yeah, that's what but, I would have said. But, but, I mean, to, you don't necessarily you don't have to, yeah. yeah, because you see I've taken it a little bit lighter, just add a little bit of variation in there, mm -hmm. so it's not flat. And I'm kind of, at this point, I'm not going to take my sky too close to the trees because I just don't want to drag any of that dark color into my sky. We will, we're actually going to push our sky and our trees together, uh, but that will be a little bit later. I used to always paint my sky before I painted my trees. Or actually, that's how we did it last week, didn't we? We painted the sky and then we painted the tree on top of it, right? Yeah, but we didn't, we painted the bottom first, right? Right, well, and I I also, and I used to paint like from the top of the painting to the bottom, but now I paint from the darkest values. So it kind of just depends where the dark values are. That's where I start. Okay, so now we're going to kind of start adding red to this. I'm going to keep it still pretty dark right now. So this is typically, you know, your typical purple. And I'm just going to start working it in here. And you see that I've got green coming out, but honestly, like, don't worry about that because as we add colors, it's going to, any imperfections that might be bugging you we can easily cover up. Okay, so now I want to have a little bit more red in here, and I'm going to start really lightening it up now to bring out those clouds. You guys all okay? Yeah, I just don't stand too well too oh, okay. long, so <laughs> I'm moving back and forth between okay. sitting and standing. Okay. Do you want to move? Do you want to sit here? No, that's all right. Yeah, and just remember, like, I'm, I am going to try to just record these, too, so right. you will have them. 
Okay, so now I'm going to start really adding more white because we have to, to really bring out these clouds, we're going to bring up the value pretty sharply at this point. And I'm also going to start at some point, like once I get these blocked in, I'm going to actually add some yellow to this purple mixture because, I mean, it's very very uh, subtle, but those clouds, especially there, kind of have a little bit more of a warm tone to them. But I'm basically going to just keep in mind that I'm going to put my light values on top of these dark values to kind of bring out the clouds. But I'm not trying to like draw the clouds or, you know, make them perfect by any means, just kind of blocking them in. And I'm going to bring up a little bit more of the red just to make it more pink. And actually, I might switch over to my other brush at this point just so I can, because this brush, the bristles are really coarse. And my other brush, it's smaller, but the bristles are a little bit softer which is kind of nice for clouds. But I'm not blending, I'm just putting light values on top of dark values. And when I press my paintbrush in, they kind of blend on their own in a way. But I'm being a lot, like I'm just kind of getting really heavy with the white. Especially down here because this is where the sun is setting. So these are going to be our lightest values. And I'm going to start adding yellow to this. And you can kind of see this color down here is a little hard to tell what it is, but I'm just keeping it kind of a light neutral color, which is what happens, you know, when you mix a purple in with yellow, you kind of start getting a more neutral color. And I'm going to save the sun kind of for last because I'll want a really clean brush to do that. Okay, and now I'm going to wipe off this brush, but I don't need it to be too clean because I'm just, at this point, I'm going to bring the sky and the trees together. So I'm just, basically, I think of it just like scribbling mm -hmm. more so than blending because I don't necessarily need like a really defined edge or anything like that. It might be easier to kind of grab the paint that's in the sky um, because I painted it. it yeah, I'm painting it a little thicker in the sky, so. Oh, I'm going to leave that alone because that's where the sun is going to be. I 
bow. I think I will grab over here at least some more green. Because then there's some reflections in one of the lights fading there. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to just get us a few of these spots of color shining through the trees. And this is, I still find this kind of tricky. Some people do it and it looks amazing. Um, but you're just going to, it doesn't really matter where they are, but just a few of these. I think what I tend to do is I go overboard and it's like too much. But if you just have a few of these kind of shining through, it kind of gives that impression of sunlight coming through the tree branches. And then I'm actually, I kind of neglected that area, so I'm just going to darken it up a little bit. And I'm mostly just using blue right here. And the bluer, like the shadowy areas, the bluer you make them, it's going to push them more into the distance. And then, it, like, if I have shadows up close, like, if I want to put in some more shadows right there, I actually might add some red to them. I'll show you that, too, before I do the sun. But basically, you're always going to keep your lightest, purest colors for last. Okay. So right in here, just to add a little bit more separation, this tree and that massive trees in the background I'm gonna take a little bit of red and I'm just gonna mix it into the green that I already have on the palette and it looks like a lot if you can see my palette mm -hmm. but when I put it on here it's really it's gonna be pretty subtle I could even go a little bit more And then, let's see. I'm gonna add more cool shadow to these furthest trees. Oops. And if when you're adding paint, if you start seeing your um, toned canvas Again, it just means that you're scrubbing too hard, so just go back over it with a lighter touch. Okay, so this is the tricky part because I didn't bring another brush, so I'm going to try to... another one? Because you can use one of the ones I have. Okay, the... I know. sure. Yeah, because I'm going to do the... I have a large collection from many Awesome. Classes. I actually, I'm so excited. I'm getting a bunch of new paintbrushes today in the mail because Jerry's... Really? Yeah, Jerry's Artorama, the website, had a sale this week where if you buy one brush, they'll give you another brush just like it for free. So I bought a bunch of brushes. I'm going to use, actually, is this, is I that watercolor? It might be, but, yep. Okay, let me use this one then. Ones yeah, okay. I always kind of get mine mixed up together too. Yeah. So for the sun, in the picture, like in the photograph, it like comes off as like a pure white and again it's just because like mm -hmm. your darkest values and your lightest values are always going to get exaggerated mm -hmm. in photos mm -hmm. so I'm not going to make mine that white I'm going to keep a lot of yellow in it but it's this is probably the only time that I don't like muddy up my colors with other colors because you've noticed like I kind of mix everything mm -hmm. all together as I go so yep. this is the only time that I really try hard to use, you know, just one color. 
And this is the part too, like I'm gonna be more careful going around the trees because I just don't want to pick up any of that green. And you see I did just a little bit into my brush, so I'm not gonna use that side again. Okay, so now I've got that all blocked in, so I'm going to... What about... Oh, oh never mind. Oh, the what? part that you can see the red on. Yeah, I'm going to do that next. I just didn't want yeah, to... Yeah. yeah, I didn't want to bring that too close. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just add a few sunspots again here. Just shining through the trees. And now... So my brush is pretty much dry. It doesn't really have any paint on it at this point. But I'm going to just kind of start pushing my trees into the sun and I like this too because it kind of just gives the effect of like even though these trees are in the distance and there's not a lot of detail the sun is kind of shining through them Ooh, I like that yeah so that's basically it I think that is a record for me. I've never done a painting that fast. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, so I'm going to come back into some brilliant colors a little bit to get some details in there. Exactly. Kind of yep. Just always save your like brightest, most brilliant colors for last. Mm -hmm. So like now you can come in a little bit of some of that red pinky. Exactly. Color. Yep. You could. That's even lighter and light and everything. Exactly. Now. Yep. You if you wanted to add highlights to the yes, clouds. Yes. And then you can also add a little bit of reflection on the yes. water. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah, because in this one you almost can't even tell. But it, since it's not like a focal point of this painting, I'm going to leave it alone. But okay. actually, like to make it look a little bit more water-like. And so you can add the purple or water. Yeah, like I, I'll just go back over to that pile of kind of neutral color. And maybe I'll just like define this a little bit more. Or I could even, you know, where that fountain is, I could just kind of add a little bit. And, this, and, and there's already red in that paint that you got, too. Exactly. So it's like a reflection of the Right, sun. right. So, yeah, I mean, you can go back in and kind of refine things. But also, you know, part of what makes an Impressionist painting an Impressionist painting is that a lot of it does remain kind of undefined. And so it's also, I think you kind of have to restrain yourself at times mm -hmm. from adding in a lot of detail because you kind of just, you know, you want to put it out there and from a distance, you know, people see it, they know what's going on and then you come up closer and it's very abstract. And right. so I think that's kind of what makes impressionist paintings interesting. And I also think that it's kind of like that's sort of the challenge is just to like let things be a little bit crude right, cause and not overwork it. Yeah, simple is the better. Exactly. The least amount of strokes or whatever you exactly. try is yep. going to be. Yeah, and you see I leave awesome. my brush strokes really thick and I let, you know, that kind of show and I don't blend things. I don't make things smooth. 